little different to do this Labor Day. You might want to look underground. News 8's Zach Spector takes us to the Happy Jack Chalk Mine. Lurking beneath the Earth's surface is one of Nebraska's newest historical monuments. The Happy Jack Chalk Mine opened today for the first time in almost 20 years. It's a big enjoyment. Uh, it's a dream to come true. And uh, I'm glad everybody's enjoying it to the max. I am. It's, I'm glad to see that people can come back in here once again and just see what it's like to be underground, you know. The mine dates back to the late 1800s when settlers mined chalk for their homes. Since then, miners have searched for other minerals as well. Around 30 years ago, it became a park. It was closed in the late 70s when the entrance collapsed. We went through it in 1970 on our honeymoon back to Grand Island and uh, we'd heard that the state had closed it eight years after that and we were really sad because it was a great place to bring youth group kids and family members and spend a weekend. I used to go in there when I was really little. We came here for family vacations a lot and it's so neat to have it back the way it used to be. In 1995, a handful of history lovers started the project. Now they're proud to offer it to the next generation. I think it's kind of spooky and it is kind of fun in the same sense as like kind of like an adventure almost. Uh, I feel like I'm in an Indiana Jones movie kind of. <laughs> After completing phase one, a path of over 200 feet and two entrances are now open. In the coming months, volunteers plan on opening other sections to reveal more of Nebraska's history and fun. Near Scotia, Zach Spector, News 8. state never had the timbering there like it is now. This is something that we're doing as the association to make this area more safe for people as they come in. The mine itself probably was started uh, in this area about 1931. Uh, it was owned by the United Mineral Company of Omaha, Nebraska, and the product that they were after was the chalk rock here. I'm going to step over here and I'm going to ask you not to follow me in. I'll just go right here. The, prod, uh, the reason I ask you not to follow me in is because this is considered one of the unsafe areas. Uh, I should, maybe I can tell you that now here. What they used in the mining process was called the room and pillar mining. And that simply means that they kept the pillars here, leave pillars, 
and keep it as narrow as possible so they could run the old Model A dump truck in here that they used to haul the rock out of down to a railroad siding about three quarters of a mile south of here. And when they got too wide, for one reason or another, then this is what would happen. You would have falling off from the ceiling and we'd have chunks, maybe 150 to 100 pound chunks, which would kill a person, break the neck or whatever else. So we don't want you to come in here, but the reason this to you, uh, you can do part of the mine, the product they wanted from that white line that you can see on the ceiling there, down approximately six feet. And that has, it'd be a little hard for you probably to uh, determine it or to detect it, but it has a softer texture than if you get up in the gritty stuff up higher. Now it originally had probably, I've been told, about 80 uses. Uh, one of them was for paint, one was for animal feed, chicken feed if you will. I've been told also that uh, it was even used and powdered uh, to make uh, mark bombing runs for training during the Second World War. What uh, this consists of, actually, maybe it's a little easier here, and you can draw in a little closer if you wish, or you can see it as we go. There's minute holes all through this vein that we're speaking of, and this was formed millions of years ago as an ancient lake bed. And all these little holes are fossilized snails and what other minute uh, marine life that makes us. We'll find a little uh, moss once in a while in, in this uh, product. It was the last one that we know of that mined the mine. I was probably 12 to 13, 14 years old at that time and I did help him, uh, not as a paid employer hand, but I'd help him. and we ended up with the tools and these are the original tools that were used in the in the mining process there was nothing fancy or uh, about it there was no it was just back-breaking work and the way they done this this bar was simply a, a model t or a model a drive shaft and the blacksmith added this blade that you can see there onto that and then they come in and they would just start in in an area like this and they would knock this out creating a wedge if you will much like you were going to fall a tree and then they would when they got done with that this other piece of equipment and nothing but a carpenter's brace and a wood bit at the end and the same blacksmith extended it to this length and they would take this and start like right here and drill a hole. And I'm not gonna drill that hole all the way back there. Until it got in probably about this length up here. Then they would take a piece of uh, broom handle like this and they would take, this is field and stream, but at that time they used Sears and Roebuck. They would take this and make a cylinder this paper's gotten damp don't work good but essentially they would roll this over they would take and twist this in shut pull this out and fill this with black powder and when we got to the end of it they would take a fuse like this this represents the fuse put it in there twist it shut insert it into this hole and then they would take this stick here and little pieces of rock that would fit in and tamp that to compress it and then they would I've got a demonstration thing here a little hard to see but this is what it would look like when they got done the fuse would stick out like this and they would light this and it wasn't like dynamite it wouldn't blast and throw rock all over you step around the corner and pretty soon it'd just go wonk and it knock down a layer of product. Then they'd drill another set of holes and do the same thing, making about three sets till they got up to the top of this vein that we were speaking of. And then they would haul it out. This, uh, this is the, what they used to work with was the coal oil lantern. Nothing 
like our nice bright lights today. To the best of my knowledge, and I don't, this one had a cork in it for a uh, stopper. I, best of my knowledge, this is the lamp they used. I'm not sure exactly about that, but I am sure about the other tools. Then when they got done lifting all the bigger chunks that they could handle, they cleaned up with this, threw it in the old truck, and then when they had anything left, they hauled it out like this and dumped it over the bank. And that's how they kept the mine floor clean. Now, when I mentioned room and pillar mining, this above us is tons and tons of pressure from the soil and the other product above there and will cause a flaking off of the support. And you can kind of see that here. Through the years, get that to come down, but you can see the, the fissures and stuff. Uh, it's caused pressure and it's deteriorating the supports that we have and it's going back. Uh, I'll guarantee you it won't fall in today. According to a traveler who came through um, this area in about 1882, Jack Swearinger was, was a hunter and a trapper who came here and wasn't as much of a hermit when he first came. In fact, he was happy when people came through. He was willing to show them through from one place to another, and uh, he was always glad to see people. But over the years, that changed because he got to feeling like everybody always wanted something from him. And he actually got to the point where, where he'd run people off with a shotgun and he wasn't all that friendly. So the song that, that I put together here kind of talks about Happy Jack's life from, from that point of view. My name's Happy Jack and I live on the peak. I've always been glad for the people I meet. And I climb up the hill and I look down below where the people they come and the waters they flow. My nose it is filled with the dust of the chalk. There's no one around with whom I can talk. So I've always been glad for the people like me. But now being alone is such a relief. My name's Happy Jack and I live on the peak. I've always been glad for the people I meet. I climb up the hill and I look down below as the people they come and the waters they blow. So I climb in my hole and I sit with a gun. I watch and I wait as the people they come. I was happy the people I meet Now being alone is all that I see Well, my name's Happy Jack And I live on the peak I've always been glad for the people I meet Well, I climb up the hill And I look down below as the people they come